Hello, welcome to basics of finite element analysis. Today, what we are going to cover is uh, 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 stuff related to <coughs> weighted integral residues, and we will try to establish as to why we have a need for these weighted integral uh, in, uh, weighted integral residues or weighted integral errors so that's what we are going to talk about need for weighted integral residues so, let us consider this equation minus d over d x a it could be a function of x times d u over d x plus u equals 0 and this governing equation is valid for this domain. You should note that in the domain I have not included the boundary points the governing equation is valid only in the domain and domain does not include boundary points and the boundary conditions are u is equal to 1 at x is equal to 1 uh, excuse equal to 0 and x times du over dx at x is equal to 1 is 0. So, this is a boundary value problem, because I have specified conditions on both the boundaries. Okay. In boundary value problems, we have to know the conditions on all the boundaries. So, let us say that we assume a solution and here we are not going to break it up into small elements we are just considering the whole domain as one single element. So, we assume a solution for <coughs> the entire domain that is 0 to 1. So, these curved brackets means that the domain does not include the endpoints. points. Okay. If it was a rectangular bracket then it means that the domain includes the endpoints. If it was a rectangular bracket on left and curved bracket on right, then it includes 0, but it does not include 1. So, this is some convention and we say that u is approximately equal to some u n some function and what is u n? It is a function of c j phi j x plus some, uh, some other function phi naught. So, I am just assuming it, there is no reason that I have to have this form, but this is for illustration purpose. j is equal to 1 to n okay. and here C j are unknown constants okay. phi j are assumed functions known and actually we assume them. So, these phi's are known and actually assumed functions. Okay. and same thing of phi of x. So, known. And we choose and when this is happening, we choose these functions.
such that BCs are satisfied. So, we choose the function such that the boundary conditions are satisfied. Why do we choose it like that? Because this governing differential equation, it is not valid on boundary conditions, right. And we will be anyway plugging this into here to ensure that the governing equation has to be satisfied. So, that work we are going to do anyway. So, the, so, so while we are choosing the function just we have to make sure that these functions satisfy the boundary conditions, because we are going to ensure that the governing equation is going to get satisfied anyway later. So, uh, we have to choose it such that boundary conditions are satisfied. So, let us say, so that is what we will do. So, let us we, we try with n equals 2. So, we will choose two functions okay. and this is what we choose phi of x is 1 which is a constant phi 1 of x is equal to x square minus 2 x and phi 2 of x is x cube minus 3 x. So, my u n x is what 1. So, I will use this equation you know I am going to use this equation. So, it is 1 plus c 1 x square minus 2 x plus c 2 x cube minus 3 x. So, this is our equation. Now, we see whether this function meets the boundary conditions or not. If we do not, if it does not meet, then we do not go further, we go and pick up another function. So, B c is, first B c is u is equal to 1 at x is equal to 0. So, we put x is equal to 0 in this entire function and it is satisfied, right. The second boundary condition is that x d u over d x at x is equal to 1, what was it? And this is equal to 0, right. So, we differentiate this equation and then multiply it by x. So, we get x times c 1 2 x minus 2 plus c 2 3 x square minus 3 and the value of this at x is equal to 1 is when we calculate it comes out to be 0. So, both the boundary conditions are satisfied. Okay. Now, what we do is now we do not know value of c 1 and c 2 right we do not know these values. So, we have to figure out these values we have made sure that the boundary conditions are satisfied. So, the way we figure out that way we figure out is that we plug this equation back in the ordinary differential equation and then see. So, we plug this back in the ordinary differential equation and develop conditions to calculate c 1 and c 2. So, that is what we do. So, we put u n where n is equal to 2 in O d e and develop conditions for finding c 1 and c 2. Okay. So, I have, so what I will do is I will not do the detailed math that is fairly straightforward, but I will write the result. So, what I get is that my final equation is 0 equals minus 2 c 1 minus 2 c 1 minus 3 c 2, this is the constant the term associated with x plus minus 3 c 2 minus 6 c 2 plus c 1 
this is the term associated with excuse me x square plus c 2 x cube. So, I have three terms related to this independent variable x and then a constant term 2 c 1 plus 3 c 2 plus 1 is equal to 0. Okay. Everyone understands how we can get this equation? All we are doing is putting this expression for u n in the partial differential uh, in the differential equation and when we plug in all that and do the math I get this equation. Now, this ordinary differential equation is valid for the region 0 to 1 the domain is 0 to 1 right domain is 0 to 1 right which means that this ordinary differential equation has to be satisfied for what range of values for all possible values between 0 and 1 for all possible values of what for all possible values of x right the domain is x is between 0 and 1. So, it has to be satisfied for all possible values in the domain that x is between 0 and 1. Now, that can happen only if this term is individually 0, right. If this term is individually 0 and if this term is individually 0 and if this term is individually 0, only then it can be true for all possible values of x otherwise it is not possible that is the only uh, thing. So, from that so now I have what 1 2 3 4 4 equations how many unknowns are there there are 3 unknowns okay. we will write down these equations. So, c 2 is equal to 0 I get from the cubic term then from the quadratic term I get minus 9 c 2 plus c 1 is equal to 0. Then from the linear term I get minus 4 c 1 minus 3 c 2 is equal to 0. And then from the constant term I get 2 c 1 plus 3 c 2 plus 1 equals 0 right which means this gives me c 2 is equal to 0. When I plug in here I get c 1 is equal to 0 right and then this is satisfied, but what about this equation it is satisfied or not it is not satisfied right. So, and so what this shows is so then we have to now go back and maybe figure out some other function because this function does not satisfy the ordinary differential equation. It satisfies the boundary condition, but it does not satisfy the ordinary differential equation right. So, that is the problem and so this is the problem we run into if we try to solve some of these uh, equations and this is a relatively simple equation it is a relatively simple equation but we are having a little hard time solving this equation in an exact way. Okay. So, that is the reason that and if these equation these conditions are not satisfied what does that mean that the error in the differential equation will be non zero for some uh, range of condition for some conditions for some conditions that error is also known as residue in uh, the remaining part of the course we will use this term residue a lot error is because it is what is left it is also known as residue. So, that is the thing. So, because of this problem we say okay, we may have a problem in getting exact solution is problematic. if these conditions were satisfied then error would have been 0 at all value for all values of x for all values of x in the range 0 to 1. If they are right now they are not being satisfied which means for all values of x it is not possible for
for me to get a zero error. So, if so that is why exact solution is problematic. So, I say okay, I am having problems with having getting an exact solution. So, I will stop worrying about it. I will say that okay, instead of having residue is 0 for all values of x, to get exact solution, I will say okay, I will not worry about this first statement, rather what I will say is, I will multiply my residue R x and I multiply it by some weight function and we will, I had discussed this earlier in last week also, I am again repeating it and then maybe next week we will actually look at the mathematics, why do we multiply it by weight function. So, instead, so what I will do is, I will integrate this error over the domain which is 0 to 1 and an integral sense, not in a point by point sense, but in an integral sense, the residues, residue is 0 in an integral sense. And it is not just an integral sense, but it is weighted integral of residue is 0 weighted integral of residue is 0. First thing intuitively you can look at it that if now I use this approach on an element, then this weighted integral of residue on small elements if it is 0, then chances are that it will become slowly very close to accurate, because on every small small element the weighted integral is 0. So, my solution will approach to 0 situation. And this w is actually a function of x. In this case, it is a function of independent variables. In two dimensional, it could be a function of x and y. In three dimension, it could be a function of x and y and z. Okay. So, this is a function <coughs> and it is called a weight function. Okay. Now, we had two condition, two const in we had two unknowns, right? C 1 and C 2 are unknowns. C 1 and C 2 are unknowns. So, what I do is I get one equation if I multiply this, if I use this equation, we assume some weight function w 1, I will get one equation from here then I assume another function w 2 and I get another equation from here. So, in that way I get two equations and two unknowns, we will do that math very quickly. So, we assume that w 1 of x is nothing but a constant. So, I assume it is x and when I do this and I plug it in this equation and how do I calculate residue? I calculate residue by plugging this equation in the differential equation, because it is not being exactly satisfied, it is there is a residue. So, I put that residue here and I get one equation and so the my first equation is 0 to 1, weight function is 1 times residue of x dx is equal to 0 and from this the relation I get is 8 c 1 plus 15 c 2 is equal to 1. So, this is the first equation I get. Then I get I assume another weight function. Now, there is a method for picking these weight functions, we will discuss that later. So, I pick up another weight function and here I just say that okay, it is a constant x. Okay and from this I get second equation 0 to 1 x times residue of x d x is equal to 0. But here I am saying x the, the weight function is same as x.
this is the assumed form of weight function okay no x is position x axis is position so weight function if i plot in this case it is like this okay in this case if i plot weight function with respect to x it is like this so from this i get another equation 15c1 plus 31c2 is equal to 10 now these are two equations mutually independent with two variables so i can get the value of solve for c1 and c2 okay this method of applying weight functions multiplying weight functions to the residue and then integrating the product over the domain see this is my domain dx is the domain if it is was a 2d surface then my domain would have been dx times dy right so this method is known as variational method and you will learn about this later a variational approach okay now there are different variational approaches and what they differ in is how do you pick the weight functions the choice of weight functions the different methods but the overall method is same that you find the residue multiply it by a weight function in an integral sense you make the error zero in an integral sense not in a point by point sense and then you apply different weight functions so you get different equations if you have n unknowns you multiply it by n weight functions there is a logical way of finding these weight functions and then you get n unknowns n equations assemble at least on the in so here we had done the mathematics for the whole domain in finite element we do it element by element same method we find residue for each element multiplied by weight function integrate it get equations at element level find all the element equations assemble them apply boundary conditions and solve it that is the thing so this is called variational method and there are different as i mentioned earlier different ways to pick up weight functions and that is why there may be several flavors of variational method so this is uh, uh, brings us to the conclusion of this lecture and uh, we will continue our discussion next week look forward to seeing you tomorrow thanks